Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media. Just taking a look at the 2022 Deluxe Edition release, or playfully called Sunday Edition release, of Ice Cream Man from Will Max Prince, Martin Morazzo, and Chris O'Halloran. And what we usually do at this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across this book in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. But before jumping in, man, I am so pleased that not only did this come out, but that the series is still continuing. So thank you, Image, for supporting it. And also, this is a book where somehow in the year 2020, yes, we all remember what happened then, but to put it plainly, stores were closed, you couldn't get in if you wanted to, but somehow this series prevailed. And another unique thing about 2020 is we got four different great horror series. So sure, we got Moonshine, we got Silver Coin, Something is Killing the Children, and of course, Ice Cream Man, probably my favorite of the bunch. Uh, but I guess I'm blaring the point too far. Uh, at least back to the format of this channel. In terms of the exterior, yeah, we have this nice traditional image design, or at least traditional for them. Uh, they just come out with deluxe hardcovers. You know, they don't mess around. So I love that about them. And uh, just to give you an idea, the Ice Cream Man itself titling, as well as Rick himself, are actually embossed. So nice little touch there. And typical with image, a nice flat spine design. Very unique. And of course, a nice reference to my favorite issue in the series, Strange Neapolitan. Man, just so damn good. Uh, and for those interested, it's about 380 pages. Uh, it collects about 12 issues of the series. Uh, so maybe just to give you an idea of the gutter and whatnot. Man, this book was so well designed. You're getting like next to no loss. It's so damn good. And I wish other companies can do what they do. But now, at least on to uh, bonus material here. Uh, yeah, we are getting quite a lot. About 40 pages of the book are actually de dedicated to the bonus material. So it's more than just variants, though, this time. Uh, we're actually getting a little bit more here. Uh, but what I found interesting is that um, artists that I've actually referenced in other videos actually make an appearance here, too. So Namit Malavia, fellow Canuck. Man, I just love the staging of this one, the color use. Man, what a visionary. Very on point. And not only that, um, another artist that I've uh, hyped up as well. Uh, this Fraser Irving guy, though. He definitely won me over as I was looking at these. Um, but this one here by Christian Ward, another artist that I've referenced. Uh, this one gives me a lot of Bill Sienkiewicz notes. You know, like I love the more the, what's the word, the structure design, the overall color use. Just the staging in general, very on point. And yeah, Fabio Moon, you ain't no slouch either. You're great too. But man, this one in particular, just very special. Uh, nice little reference here to 50s comics. Yes, when the Comic Code Authority came into being. Yes, once upon a time, women's ankles were considered indecent or taboo. It's amazing how times change. But man, yeah, overall, just very strong art overall. And speaking of which, uh, the series artist, Marazzo, Thank goodness he stays on board. Thank goodness Image has that much faith in, you know, creators that they would, you know, lend them that long onto a series. It almost gives a lot of uh, Steve Scross, uh, you know, impressions off of this. But probably one of the most unique parts, something that maybe a lot of folks would gloss over, is this scripting for issues. Uh, now, sure, there is actually very detailed work here, even references to, like, other mediums. Um, but... Back to what I was referring to earlier, my favorite issue of the series, Strange Neapolitan. That issue doesn't actually have any dialogue. So I love the fact that even as you're looking at the staging or the scripting, it even references the layout of that issue, because that's very important to that one story. Absolutely love the fact that they even include it here, so very on point. Um, but at least now, I guess on to the next part here, art and plot points. Now, if you haven't guessed already, yes, this is more of a anthology-based horror. Sure, there are a few, you know, continuing threads, like the Detective, 5e, Rick, and Caleb. So, yeah, I guess you can follow a bit of a story in that respect. But overall, each story is its own thing, with its own catharsis. So, very much appreciate that. And, yeah, you're getting a definite, definite sense that the same for kids. Like, the kind of, like, mediums and the kind of, uh, you know, I guess what's the word, subject matter. Very, very, well, not for the faint of heart. 
Um, but you're kind of seeing what I mean with Marazzo, where it may look very pedestrian, but he has a very a great sense of pacing with the way he stages the panels. Very on point. And of course, the series moniker Liggety Split or, you know, Liggety Splat, depending on the scenario. Uh, but yeah, that nice haunting kind of look to it. Oh yeah, this issue with the two junkies. Um, it, this is just a great reminder that this series was, like, there's a lot going on where it ain't just your typical horror. It's also trying to give you a nice moral to each story where, sure, you may start off with the purest of intentions. This couple just met, love each other, want to experience everything new. They unfortunately experience something that they shouldn't have. And they just fall down a rabbit hole, unfortunately. But I like how they introduce this red herring story. And you wonder why is it here? It will become a big major factor later in it. But man, like it has a great ending. Like it almost makes you feel like, damn, if only things were different, right? But man, just such a damn good way to tell a story. Uh, then I think there's this uh, another awesome story, good old fashioned vanilla where it follows this old 50s pop star. Nobody knows him anymore. He's basically forgotten. Uh, but, you know, Rick takes him on a journey. And I love how through this hallucination, uh, he meets these characters that are actually names of songs. So yeah, Ruby Tuesday, you know, Billy Joel, Captain Black. I'm sorry, Captain Jack, what's wrong with me? Uh, the Beatles, Eleanor Rigby, you know, you get your Ziggy, another Rocky Raccoon, and Major Tom. I love the referencing to it and the way it plays out in the story. Oh, man, it makes you want to live out the glory days. And that's, I think, exactly what they were going for with this issue. Very on point. Man, oh, man, another heartbreaker. This one, let's put it this way. If you read this one, only will you read it will you really understand what's going on. I, but such a banger. Just, to, just reminds you how different everyone's life can really be. Oh, speaking of which... Uh, this one, forgive me, I, I think it's called, like, The Ballad of the Falling Man. Or of a Falling Man. And, yeah, it's just the dude, he's going to jump off this building. He's reflecting on life. And it's funny how, as he's reflecting, his life doesn't seem that horrible. But, you know, everybody has their reasons, right? Uh, but I, I like how the, it juxtap sorry, juxtaposes between what's going on inside the building as he's descending to his own hell. That even inside the building... Things are going, getting crazier and crazier and more and more horrific and ludicrous. I just love how it matches it almost perfectly. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, this is probably one of the first ones where you get a hint that there's like an ongoing thread going on here. Very on point. Uh, and then, of course, probably my favorite issue, Neapolitan. As mentioned, there's no dialogue in this story. And the guy just orders a Neapolitan, three flavors, comes to the street corner... And he separates three different ways by the color. And I love this medium. You could tell that, yeah, Prince, he knew what he was doing when he was using this one. Uh, where it's not just the color design. You can't even say good, bad, worse, or anything like that. It's up to the reader to decide which one is really the good ending, which one's the bad. Uh, and, man, like, I just love how it paces out with... Yeah, not a shred of dialogue. This is why you choose the, the medium to tell your story. Because I feel like this could only happen in this book. It, it would be way too hard to do in live action. Or really get across in live action. But man, such a damn good story. Speaking of a damn good story, oh yeah, this super sweet one about the girl who won't let her best friend go after she's passed on. Man, this whole series is just like every single issue is a banger. Uh, but the more I reveal, like, probably the less, uh, I guess, convincing it'll be. It's not so much about my opinion at this point. Uh, this is pretty much a 10 out of 10, if you really wanted to ask me for mine. So definitely a must. Uh, but it's not about me at this point. It's all about your opinion at the end of the day. And I wouldn't mind hearing your thoughts in the comments down below. Just the same. Y'all folks take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.